Rimmelweger House. I'm standing right next to Markus Besser. So good to see you. Yeah, good to see you again. How are you doing? I'm fine. We have two options. First of all, we can talk about your new record. Or we can talk about Lego. What would you like to do? Let's focus on the Lego part. Yes, <laughs> right, today okay. is for Lego. Okay, but Marcus Bess is a great singer. His record is out very soon. So we start here with the Lego products. Yeah. And I think we should start here because, I mean, this is awesome. When I grew up, I saw Jurassic Park in the cinema. I was thrilled. It was such an amazing movie. And now we see this set with such an awesome dinosaur. So who came up with this idea? Well, you know, when we restarted the Jurassic Project, the Jurassic World Project, when the second movie came out, uh, we actually went around the office and we started gathering everything we had around the franchise to, to kind of map out ideas of what we could be doing. And we had a, an original sketch model that was done back in 2012. And I'll definitely advise you to talk to Mark Stafford about that in more detail later on. But that's actually what started the whole idea of having this massive dinosaur. Uh, then I was responsible to to push the design team to actually take uh, the time to develop this product. I assigned the brief to Mark Stafford. He's, uh, a lot of you guys might know him from the fan community, yes. and uh, he's a great model builder. And this was the first time he had the chance to actually work one of these big D2C models. And I think he did a tremendous work, and he can definitely tell you a lot more about the details of that later on. We will. This is just a, a, just teaser, a teaser. teaser. And um, there's a funny story, Marcus. Um, a little private here. You know my favorite legal designer of all time is Jamie Brad. Yes. And you've been on the second spot for three years in a row. Okay. Disney Castle still growing every year. Such an awesome set. And then we've been some great set of Mike Psyche. And I told him, Mike, Mike, uh, and, and because of the Mustang, and I wasn't the big fan of the Brickheads. So yeah. he kicked you off the second place. But then I sent him an image. I was at the Toy Fair in, Norm in, in New York City. And I said, look at this, because... There's a running gag. I told Mike all the time, your carousel is fine, but the minifix are not safe. <laughs> and then I sent him an image and he wrote me back, okay, I'm now on third spot because this is designed by Marcus Bessa. Am I right here? If this is a true story, you're back on the second spot. <laughs> it is true. It is my design, so I'm glad to be back on the second spot. Yeah, with, with the egg spinner. Yes. Yeah, because uh, this was a prototype in... It still is. No, it's the final? Yeah, this is the final. Okay, because yeah. in New York we've seen the prototypes of the, of the elements here. Yeah. But again, this is Mike. Look at this. The minifix are safe here. <laughs> it's true. Safety first, always. So for always. us, it's very important. Yeah, these products are uh, the novelty Jurassic World products we're introducing in 19, and they are tied into a content that we're developing with Universal. Yeah. So we have 13 episodes of original Lego content coming out later this year, and the whole storyline takes place before the original Jurassic World movie. So we see Owen and Claire... Uh, getting to know each other, becoming friends, and uh, developing a relationship. And we see that uh, as we also go through a whole second storyline about a treasure hunt. So we designed our products together with the creator team that was developing the TV uh, series. And we are very excited to introduce uh, Baryonyx as a whole new dinosaur that we haven't had in our certain before. We have a whole new version of the T-Rex with a much darker up in age color scheme that is a bit more scary. And it goes uh, beautifully against our very colorful uh, T-Rex yeah. dino uh, mech, which is stretching the franchise a little bit to ground that was uh, untouched before. But it's very exciting for us to be able to actually make toys that are so much more fun and exciting uh, than what we normally would see from a, a big movie. Um, uh, we are definitely excited also to introduce a new uh, Dilophosaurus, which is a, we call him a teenage Dilophosaurus. So it's in a scale that allows us to actually have a bit more variety of dinosaurs in smaller price points. Um, and we also bring him back a fan favorite, which is the Triceratops that we haven't seen in the market for many years. And we are bringing it back now uh, in a whole new color scheme. What I loved in New York, um, beside your very, very nice and safe carousel, <laughs> and I like uh, this one, this stand here, uh, yeah. which is really great too. So um, you can add all those things to your fairground at home. Exactly. The idea is to not only expand uh, the, the park itself with the amusement park, with a ride and the kiosk here, but also introducing new corners from the island where some other adventures will take place and hopefully kids will be excited about. Again, you're the design lead of this Jurassic yes. World set? So basically what it means is that I'm leading a, a group of designers yeah. and I'm part of the core team that defi defines together with the marketing lead and the project manager uh, what products we're going to develop and uh, we are responsible to create the briefs and set the direction for the designers and I work closely with the very talented designers to create these toys. 
then on top of that, I also actually got my hands on very, uh, very directly with some of the models. So I was very much involved with designing this one and that model. So another plus point here, Marcus Besser, you're back in the race. <laughs> and uh, you're also the designer of the new Harry yes. Potter stuff. I've been very busy uh, in the last okay. few, uh, couple of uh, years. And I'm very excited to be actually involved with these two franchises because I grew up with both Jurassic Park. Uh, I didn't watch it in the cinemas because I wasn't uh, old enough to go and see it. But I did watch it countless times with my VHS uh, tape uh, at home. And uh, and Harry Potter was also it's what I call now my my Star Wars. I have that relationship that other fans have with Star Wars. I grew up with reading reading the books, watching the movies. Uh, so I'm really excited to also be now leading a team of passionate, very uh, uh, dedicated designers that love the universe of Harry Potter. And we are seeing amazing results with a franchise that with the products that got re released in 2018. So we are super excited to see how these will be performing. And uh, we're uh, yeah, super delighted to, to see some of the classic icons like the Buzz and the Hagrid's Hut coming back in a more accurate and enhanced version that we're very proud of, but also bringing some new things that we haven't seen before, like the Bobaton carriage from the French school or the, Pat the Patronus uh, spell with a focus on a very new and special Patronus uh, part that we are very happy about, the stag. Uh, I saw an image on your Insta feed, yes. and there was this set. So this is also of this is your design. Yes. So I, I've worked on this design uh, together. The the stag was designed by an element designer that we work with, uh, Essa. So we have a whole team of designers that work on the sculpt of new elements. But again. Being the design lead on a project means that I'm very much involved with the designer and also deciding on the on the details that we're going to capture, how we're going to work with uh, the tubes inside to, to reduce the clutter and make it as beautiful as possible. So any technical challenges that we might face, I'm also very involved in trying to come up with solutions to figure out and resolve those. So it's a very exciting role that is stepping up from the role that I had before as a designer uh, developing models. So now I get a bit of both worlds and it's very, very exciting. But good, it's good to see that you still build. Um, yes. It's always, yes. you know, I heard some of this, this design lead, oh. And I still, yeah, exactly. It's a challenge quite yeah. often for design leads that uh, do this, take the step and then actually stay away from building because they yeah. don't find the time. I try to make as much time as possible and it has been an agreement with my manager to make sure that I secure that time okay. because I do believe that that's when I get happier and I d deliver the best. Uh, but I've also got, I de designed the bus and I've also worked on the carriage uh, for this and the calendar uh, for this launch. So a lot of stuff you have to do. Um, I'm, I'm honest here. I haven't watched Harry Potter. Please don't, uh, please don't hit me. Please, I have all movies at home in Blu-ray. When my daughter is maybe eight or nine, we will start to watch. So I have never. But, but I think it's great that you have that plan that you're going to enjoy it together with your daughter. So I have, I, I have because I want to wait because yeah. I bought the, the whole box. I have all movies at home and we will start to watch it. So you, you're both going to enjoy that moment. Oh, I'm your father. Wait, yeah. it's a different <laughs> franchise, but there's moments. Don't spoil like me. Don't spoil <laughs> me. Okay. So again, um, but I think. But the good thing is, the same with Stranger Things, I haven't yeah. seen, but I really enjoyed to build this yeah. uh, Justin model. Um, so it's great to see here, and when I look at all those sets, there are two sets, I was, oh, this looks great. I think this hut looks really great, and I thought, the bus is really great. So again, I, I haven't seen the movie, but it looks really stunning. Yeah, and uh, the challenge here was, we have done two iterations of the bus in the past, and we wanted to really uh, do something that was improved and more accurate than ever before. So we introduced actually a new window, which is a one by three by three window with a glass. And that allows us to create a front of the bus that is much more accurate than we've ever done before, with the proportions right and the split in the middle. And on top of that, then we wanted to also innovate on the way to access the inside of the bus. So you actually have room to put the driver in, you have the sliding bed back and forth. It's a spoiler from the movie, but sorry, there's, there's bed sliding back and forth. The chandelier is also swinging. So for those that have seen the movies and read the books, they know that these are details that count. And uh, we're very happy to incorporate those. And also then there's a little access room to the rooftop where we storage ha uh, Harry's uh, trunk with uh, his own stuff when he gets on the bus. And what I like here, um, I always, I mean, a big fan of the modular, so that you can add something. Yep. And the same is here. You can yep. add the clock tower to the other two sets and enlarge your castle. 
Yes. So with this new iteration of the Hogwarts Castle, we tried to uh, have a new take on how to grow Hogwarts. So we introduced uh, the Great Hall and the Whomping Willow in 2018, which connect. And now we have a third section of the castle with a clock tower that not only brings new elements to the inside of the castle, so we have the infirmary, we have the Defense Against Dark Arts uh, classroom, we have a whole dance floor where there is a feature where the, the minifigures can dance with each other, but then it actually adds also that accurate uh, architectural detail of the clock tower to the big castle that kids and grown-ups are building in their uh, homes. And Christmas is near, as we all know. And they're going to be the first time a Lego Harry Potter advent calendar. So we've seen the City One, the France, um, and of course the Star Wars calendar for many, many years. And now there's a Harry Potter calendar. And when I first saw the image, well, there's so much going on. I like the train mm -hmm. and um, so many details. I like the chess field. I think it's something else in the Harry Potter world, but it's, it's similar. So, and the golden statue. So, um, was it easy to pick? the small models or do you have like 100 scratch models and have to choose 10? Well, this one has uh, actually was developed really fast as a model because we it came in as a late request from our markets because they saw that the franchise was doing so great and there was an appetite for it and they, they asked, can you by any magic possible create a calendar this late for uh, 19 assortment. So we actually did it after everything else was done and it was finished just a few months ago and it's coming out to the market very soon. So what we did was we mapped out a, a few sketches, uh, not hundreds, but a few more than what you see here and then selected some of the best uh, things we had and it was a partnership with Warner Brothers also to make sure that we got something that was iconic and true to the universe and had the spirit of Christmas. It's really good to see for many people out there and maybe for me in the future too that we see Harry Potter again. Um, let's talk a minute about the Burkheads. Again, yes. I wasn't a big fan of those. I've built a few. It's it's fun. Very good elements. Very useful. Yeah. <laughs> Had to they are gone. I'm sorry because I need the, the parts. But yeah, again, nice there. ones. But we see some new one, um, the Stage of Liberty, which yeah. is going to be released in the US first, and then in the in the other markets. We see some seasonal sets, yes. and it's a future question. But maybe you can g give us a hint. Is the end of the brickheads near, or would you like to continue? Uh, is there a future? There is definitely a future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brickheads is not dead. Okay. The the franchise was set to do something which was inspire people to build yeah. and be creative. We created a form that actually allowed people to feel that uh, they could dare to create and express themselves in some way because there was a guided creativity. We had a form that was yeah. easy to tap into. We went strong in 2018 because we wanted to onboard as many people as possible. So we had all the franchise we could take out of our library put into the franchise. And I think we succeeded greatly on that. We introduced a super strong product with a Gold Brick Miss Hue, which really yeah. pushed that agenda. And now we continue because Brick has became an icon of its own. And it became parallel to, I wouldn't say on pair, but on the side of the minifigure, it's another expression of Lego form and Lego shape for character design. So we're very happy to see not only what it sparkles in terms of creativity out there, but we're definitely continue to tapping into it. And the, the Statue of Liberty or Lady Liberty is just an example of it. We have the seasonals coming in, but we do have also a couple of other IP characters coming here and there. They will come sporadically. There is not a wave like we've used to have, but there's definitely more in life in Brickheads. But there's a good news. So Brickheads yeah. are not dead for all the guys out there who love yes. them. And Marcus, there's one last topic. I mean, when, when I follow you on Instagram, I see you're doing many, many things. You're creative. You, there's a new card game. You're a singer. Do you still love your work at Lego? There are some concerns. Oh my goodness, Marcus could be gone one day. He could leave Berlin because it's too cold here. Do you love your job? Will you stay here? Will you be a Lego designer in the next 10 years? You have to say yes now. Uh, I think so. I, that's all I can say. I'm, I'm building a house, so I'm actually... De here I'm in, in the in region? In Denmark, yes. And yeah, it's a good close, thing. Yeah, so that's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm planning to actually create my roots here. I enjoy the country. I enjoy living here. So... Uh, and I really enjoy my, my job, so I don't see why I should be planning and leaving anytime soon. So, uh, so I think I'll stick around. Google Markus Besser for his new record, and he's a Lego designer. We love your stuff. You're back on the second spot because of your great carousel. <laughs> Thank you very and much. please, it would be great. Just my thought, if you're going to see a new Disney castle, something Markus Besser like -ish in the future, <laughs> any big Maybe. thing. So it's possible? Maybe I was busy with something last year that maybe is coming. This is a good teaser. We will end now. Marcus Besser, thank, thank you. you so much for your time. See you next time. Bye.